All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing something uh, a little bit fun here. What we're going to do is a performance test for the Flight Factor A320. Um, I did a video like this just for the Tolis 319, and if you re remember, if you've seen that video, um, it was pretty shocking how accurate the aircraft was. It was a 40 second uh, time that I did in the real aircraft, and it was 40 seconds uh, in the sim, almost exactly. So we're going to do the same thing here with the 320. This is a flight I did the other day going from Los Angeles, California, KLAX, to Dallas, Fort Worth. And I've wrote down and printed out all the takeoff information and data. And I'll go ahead and upload that on the screen here so you can take a look at that. All right, guys. So here I am sitting in my hotel room editing this very video. And I cannot find the pieces of ACARS printer paper that all the performance data was on. So I realized I must have left it in my sim room. I recorded this video on X-Plane yesterday and I wanted to do that so I could edit the content during my trip that I'm on right now. So unfortunately, yet again, I have failed you to uh, upload the actual ACARS uh, information. So I'm going to have to take my word for it. I do have the uh, all the information is in the sim is correct and I will upload the images that I used for um, converting pounds to kilograms and we are going to revisit this video again real soon. The reason that we're going to revisit this video in the future is because for one I want to get a video of a no flex takeoff as well. I want to get the data from the real aircraft and I've decided that I don't, I'm not satisfied with the parameters of my data collection. I don't like using aircraft liftoff as a final time um, for judging the takeoff roll because I feel that can be a little bit subjective depending on how fast you rotate the aircraft. Now while it may only be off a fraction of a second or so, I've decided that on the further on the next video that we're going to do on the takeoff test, I'm actually just going to do the time from the levers reaching the flex or toga detent and when the aircraft reaches V1. So there would be more definitive time frame instead of kind of calculating uh, aircraft liftoff. So before I receive a bunch of negative uh, comments or saying that it's inaccurate, be aware that I, I am aware of this and we are going to revisit this. We're going to continue uh, doing these trials and I'm going to upload the content for you. And I promise I will eventually remember to up load the images of the ACARS printer data so you could see for yourself that I'm not just making these numbers up and that they are real numbers from the aircraft. And now I had to do some conversions so I'm going to show you the screenshots. I was just using a standard uh, pounds to kilograms conversion and there may be some discrepancies between um, you know the, the cargo and uh, or the fuel a little bit because you know each Airbus can be different uh, weights and whatnot. The key that's going to be the real difference is this an initialization page B here. We want to make sure we have an exact zero fuel weight and zero fuel weight CG and the exact trim setting uh, for the flight factor Airbus that I did in the real Airbus. I flew an exact same uh, aircraft A320214 uh, non sharklet edition. So I'm going to go ahead and fire this airplane up here and we're going to give this a test. All right, so the zero fuel weight for takeoff was 130.9. That was in pounds, so that's 130,000.9. Translate that to kilograms. We have 59 decimal three. And then we're going to have our CG for takeoff was 29 decimal eight. So we can put that in here like this. The fuel on board I wrote it down, the fuel on board for takeoff, actual takeoff fuel on board was 24.3. So we convert that, that's 11.022, so we'll just call it 11.0. And if I hit this button here, it should change it, and yes it did. Here is our fuel now showing 11.0. Our CG is set, and that looks correct. So all we got to do is fire up the aircraft here. Oh, almost forgot the most important thing. 
is the V speeds. So the V speeds are as follows 153, 153, 155, flaps 1, flex. 58. Now real quick, a little off topic here. I know a couple guys were talking about this THS setting here. Um, in this, in the Airbus 19 20, 21 family, as far as I am aware, this is just a reminder, this does nothing for our aircraft. I think uh, another family of Airbus, maybe it's the heavies, um, it will auto set your trim on the THS. This does nothing for this aircraft. So according to your airline or your procedures, you may put something in this box just as a reminder. Um, but where I work, we just leave this box block, this box blank, and uh, check the trim at, right before takeoff. And uh, of course, we set it right after we start the engine. You can't set the trim. Oops, can't set the trim without the engines running. So we need after start, we set the trim and we check it two or three times on the taxi app. So that's just a tidbit on the uh, THS. Right. That goes back to normal. Flaps come to one. Alright, flaps are set at 1, we'll do a takeoff config, auto brake max, put in the opposite order, takeoff config, we are good to go. Alright, last thing I want to show you guys, so you know that I set it up properly, on the weather, I have the weather right here, weather for that day was light and variable winds at uh, three knots so I just split the difference it's not gonna make much of a difference I just gave us kind of a quartering headwind so that kind of simulates just a light and variable at three knots the temperature is 18 degrees Celsius barometric pressure 3016 with a dry runway so we have our weather set we've got our performance data set we have the aircraft set just like it was in real life and what I'm going to do is, as soon as I reach the flex detent with the thrust lever, I'm going to start the chronometer. And I stop the clock as soon as I uh, retract the gear or, uh, you know, we have positive rate of climb. It's kind of right, you know, uh, if you want to rotate, positive rate, gear up. And we should be right at 43 seconds. I have time from flex. It said 48, but it was actually five seconds before it actually announced uh, flex on the and uh, PFD. So let's go ahead and release the parking brake. So we're going to go ahead and hold the brakes, spool it up to 50%. We'll release the brakes here slowly. And straight to the flex. There it is. Just doing a quick freeze frame here. I apologize. That little uh, master caution that you heard there was because I bumped the thrust lever into the toga position instead of the flex detent, and the aircraft was set up for a flex takeoff. Now, this could affect the takeoff performance and data we're trying to collect. However, if you watch the N1s, the N1 didn't even get to its flexed position. Um, before I was able to get the thrust lever back into the flex detent. So um, no harm, no foul there, but that's what that little master caution was. Start the top. Uh, I have to apologize a little bit on the rotation there. My joystick actually slipped backwards 
from the uh, stand that I have it on. So that was the reason for the over rotation and toga lock uh, on departure there. So that is an example of what not to do. If you're getting this when you're rotating, you're rotating way too fast. So um, the triggered alpha floor and put it into toga lock. So that's what you do not want to do. Again, I apologize. Um, that was a a uh, hardware fault on my end, but we still collected our data, and we can see here the aircraft is uh, airborne, and the gear are coming up. I stopped the clock at about 36 seconds. So according to my notes, we should have been rotating no earlier than about 43 seconds um, from ta from the departure roll. So and by departure roll, that's when the FMA announces. Uh, man flex. So I've had my hypothesis that this aircraft is overpowered on the ground. Um, and that is definitely confirmed. Now why 36 to 43 seconds may not seem like a lot. Think about that in distance traveled. So that's seven seconds and we're traveling down a runway at, you know, a hundred plus knots. Seven additional seconds is, is, a, is a little bit of a ways to go. So I'm not sure if it's a ground friction or ground roll issue, but I do think that the aircraft is overpowered uh, on the ground. Now, I also have suspicions that it is the brakes are extremely overpowered as well. I can actually almost confirm that just by having several thousand hours in the Airbus, I know that it doesn't stop as nearly as fast as this Flight Factor Airbus does, especially without heating up the brakes. But with that being said, we have conclusive evidence now that we are having an overpowered situation here uh, with the aircraft. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, once again, I do apologize for the uh, toga lock there. A uh, little bonus footage. I'm going to go ahead and unpause the sim and I'm going to show you how to get out of this situation. If you find yourself in this situation here, toga lock just means that you need to move the thrust levers and retake command of them. So how do you take command of the thrust levers? We do what's called match and mash. You can either bring back the thrust levers to their current position. So you can see where my thrust levers are, the blue dot, and where the N1 is. So in this case, it would be hard to actually match and mash them. I could go to Toga and bring them back, but in this case, I would probably just bring the thrust levers to idle real quick momentarily. That will disengage the auto thrust, and then I can bring the thrust right back in and get out of this Toga lock alpha floor situation. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that here for you now. I'm going to go ahead and Bring the thrust levers to idle, and then bring them right back to the climb detent, flex detent there, and now we have cleared the situation, and we really don't have any problem with uh, our departure. Now, of course, if you did that in real life, there's some significant issues going on that you need to work on because you should not trigger alpha floor uh, on a rotation like that. But that's what it's there for. If you find yourself in that situation, remember, bring the thrust levers to idle, disengage the idle thrust, and get them right back to where you need to be. Or you can go into toga and then bring the thrust levers back to the climb detent. That will also get you out of that situation. One last little side note there, guys, before you go. Um, I don't know why in this situation I brought the thrust levers to idle and then back into the climb detent. Um, during a takeoff, it's probably better technique to actually go into the toga detent and then bring the thrust levers back. Um, you know, you can disengage them that way. And then make sure you rearm your auto thrust after you are back in the configuration that you want to be in. But yeah, I mean, you can bring them to idle, but technique wise, close to the ground like that, I actually, in hindsight, would have rather seen myself uh, go up into the toga detent and then back, back to the climb detent. All right, that'll wrap it up, guys. I've got some other videos coming out here real soon. I know it's been kind of slow around the holidays here. Um, make sure you catch up on the uh, pilot series for system-related information and then the professional series, which has a second video coming out that I am editing right now. I will catch you guys again very soon.